Welcome to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Um, I just wanted to start out uh, this particular video um, by saying thanks to all the uh, YouTube viewers out there and uh, people that follow my blog. Um, I'm, I want to thank you guys for uh, encouraging me and uh, with your comments and your questions. Um, I don't know how it is with, uh, with other folks that put uh, videos up. Um, but these, this feedback is important um, to the people making the videos, I believe, and, uh, um, and it makes the videos better uh, for everybody. So anyway, thank you guys very much for that, and, uh, and uh, keep it up, and uh, it, it spurs me on, and uh, I'm getting a lot of work done, and uh, partly because I know uh, in, in the back of my mind that uh, you guys are waiting to see something new. So, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of pressure, but it's okay, right? Uh, uh, it's not the bad kind of pressure, let's just put it that way. Um, anyway, thanks a lot, and, uh, and post and comment, cause, uh, and to all your favorite channels, and uh, I'm sure that the, uh, the people um, putting that stuff up uh, really like to see that uh, uh, that people are getting involved. So that's a way you guys can get involved. So don't lurk, participate. Um, anyway, we've been working on this uh, steady rest here for a while. Um, and it's it's getting pretty close now. Uh, we should finish it up in another couple episodes here. And uh, we got some other real interesting projects coming up. Um, I'll let you guys, I'll let you folks, not necessarily guys, um, in on the, the secret project, uh, which won't be able to be secret very much longer. Uh, it's not really secret, it's just uh, I haven't... Uh, um, it's very special, so uh, um, it's a big deal. So anyway, lots of new stuff coming up. I got lots of ideas. Um, people are commenting and, uh, and giving me more ideas too, so uh, that feedback is part of that process. So. Um, just want to throw out a couple of plugs. Uh, there's some really great channels out there. Um, uh, Keith Fenner uh, with uh, Turn Right Machine Works. He's uh, one of my favorites. Uh, he's a uh, no bullshit kind of a guy. He gets a lot of work done, and uh, he's fun to watch. And uh, um, and he's doing some good stuff. Okay. Uh, one of the things that he's doing uh, that I really just love the idea of his, uh, his support of uh, young people getting into the trades and he's putting his money or his mouth where his money is or his money where the mouth is and doing a little bit of work to put a toolbox together for some young apprentice and he's vetting some um, some folks that will that may ultimately receive this uh, uh, this toolbox so uh, I really think this is an awesome idea and uh, um, you know, part of what I do with these videos is, uh, is a, my way of giving back to the trade and, uh, and Keith's uh, idea with, the, uh, with his toolbox and then getting contributions from all over the world to, uh, to put in the toolbox uh, is just uh, right in that vein and it's just, it's killer. Um, there's Mr. Pete out there, uh, Tubal Kane, uh, he's got, you know, Bucket loads of great videos and uh, um, well put together um, and uh, very clear and concise is awesome stuff. And um, another good one is the uh, WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Um, this guy's a, uh, an awesome welder and uh, really gets into the nitty gritty of uh, uh, some of these welding techniques. So anyway, support those guys. Comment on their channels. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. And give them some feedback, give them some encouragement, and uh, they'll just keep they'll just keep producing. I know that's the case for me. So, um, also, uh, uh, I entertain suggestions. So, you guys in your comments and in your posts, uh, um, if there's something you want to see or something I didn't show very well, uh, or something I just kind of glossed over or whatever that you're curious about, uh, uh, throw a comment up. Um, I can't promise I'll do a video on it, but uh, um, I'll try to get, uh, I'll try to answer your questions uh, and uh, and entertain the suggestions. So, uh, not that I need more work, but uh, um, uh, 
uh, I do this stuff because I like doing it, and um, so uh, if something is interesting to me, then uh, it doesn't matter how much work it is. It's just uh, we'll just do it. Um, so on the note on the uh, I mentioned the apprentice thing. I'm thinking about doing something similar to that uh, on uh, on the West Coast here in California. Um, and uh, I haven't quite thought about how I want to do it, but uh, um, if you guys got some ideas, I'm, I'm all ears. And uh, maybe a toolbox, maybe uh, some in-shop uh, training or something like that, I don't know yet. And, um, uh, or maybe both, I don't know. So uh, if you got any ideas, uh, uh, let me know. So anyway, enough of this uh, um, yapping here. Um, we're going to go back in the shop here and uh, get started on uh, some more stuff um, and um, stay tuned. Lots of new stuff coming up. See you soon. Bye. Alright, what we got here is, uh, this is uh, part of the, uh, the steady rest. Um, this is the part that uh, uh, the tie bolt clamps everything to the lathe. Um, I added a counter bore here to it and uh, so that the nut gets sunken down in there. and. I really kind of want to get rid of some of these sharp edges that are uh, kind of in the areas where you're going to have your hands and moving around. So uh, uh, anyway, I'm just not going to chamfer on here. I went and looked and I didn't have a, a, a good 45 degree chamfer tool. I had uh, taken uh, my inserted one uh, to work and it's in, the, uh, it's in uh, one of the CNC's at work. Um, uh, since I didn't use it much around the, around the shop here. Um, but this is a technique I wanted to show you guys uh, that's of interest. And uh, um, you, can, you can cut a chamfer. Uh, this is just a, a single flute um, a countersink, and it happens to be a 90 degree countersink. Um, but so it's a single lip cutter, is what it is, basically. And, uh, um, and it cuts real nice chamfers. Um, you got to feed them slow, uh, and uh, so you get a smooth finish. But uh, um, if you have a bunch of different angled countersinks, um, you can cut some some different angles. I don't know how interesting 41 degrees is uh, for a chamfer, but uh, certainly 45 is uh, is valid. Um, oh, hold on a second. All right, so we'll go ahead and do a. Neutral. I'm just going to brush a little uh, cutting oil on there on the cut. And come on in about a hundred thousandths. Uh, uh, three millimeters, something like that. Two and a half millimeters. Well, you can see it, this sounds kind of like a fly cutter. And then uh, you want to, you know, when you're, when you're doing this, you want to um, go back over it with a light pass. Um, and um, you know, climb. You can even climb cut with a light pass. Um, you don't want to climb cut with a single flute like this. Uh, um, you know, a heavy cut, light cut's okay. So that was yeah, hundred thousandths uh, cut there. And it's chunking away. You know, ideally this would be a multi-flute cutter um, or a carbide so I could spin it fast and, and you get a nice uh, finish right out of the gate. So 
one inch cutter, uh, 25 millimeter cutter, and where I'm cutting on the taper is uh, approximately half inch, uh, 12 millimeters in diameter, or something like that. Um, you know, you can cut in different areas on the uh, on the cutter, and you'll want to move it up and down uh, to to use the whole cutting surface of the of the cutter, uh, so you don't wear out one little spot in it. One shop I worked in, uh, we used to punch thousands and thousands of uh, uh, 1332 diameter holes, right? Well, every stinking countersink in the whole shop was worn out right at that. 1332, uh, you know, uh, 11 millimeter diameter, right? Um, so, you know, uh, uh, it was funny, you know, the countersinks were basically great other than that one little spot, so uh, it was kind of funny. Um, all right, so, so there's a little bit of smeared material on that cut. Uh, this is 4142, uh, I believe, the steel, uh, and um, um, go back. And take another pass. Okay, I got you in a little closer here now. Um, so you can see the finish that left when I came back across it, uh, uh, climb milling uh, a few thousandths. Uh, that leaves a pretty nice finish. When you, the conventional mill, it's, it's a little bumpy and rough, but uh, if you come back across it, uh, slow feed and uh, climb mill, uh, you can get a nice finish with that technique with the, with the countersink. All right, so here we're um, um, drilling the hole. This is the lower section here, and then this is the swinging latch bolt here. So uh, we're gonna poke a hole through this, uh, this steel this way, um, and this will be the pivot for the, uh, um, uh, this latch bolt here. Um, I'm gonna ream the hole, because I want it to fit the pin pretty good and have a smooth finish in it. Um, so if the pin's rotating in there, it'll rotate smoothly. Um, anyway, just cause these are typically a few thousandths uh, uh, undersized, you know, maybe, uh, oh, I don't know, 25 to 50 microns uh, undersize uh, from the nominal. And uh, we'll ream it on size and they'll have a nice smooth slip fit there. So I already got a pilot hole through there, and uh, we'll go through now with it. Um, this is about uh, 15 thousandths undersized, um, 400 microns undersized left for uh, for reaming here. So. You see I'm pecking here just to, so I have short chips. And you see that I wipe the edge of the hole and it's to brush chips, but it also squeegees a little oil off of the edge of the brush and lets it run down the inside of the hole there.
and I've chopped the uh, the shank of these uh, reamer off. And normally they're about that much longer, and you have to drop the knee considerably uh, to um, to get them in there. So, I'm, ooh, that sucker's running out a little bit. Uh, um, this thing it might be bent. Um, Yeah, and the common sizes, I've done that on a few of them, so. One reamed hole. Okay, feels pretty good. Okay, um, so I thought I could get away with this um, hanging up here to cut this slot here. Um, it's flapping around a little bit. It's, it's a marginal setup, but uh, I thought if I could take light cuts, uh, it might work out. But it's vibrating too much. I don't like it. Uh, ow. Darn it. Look at that. Ouch. Right to the glove. Um, it's a marginal setup, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to improve it. So I got to... I got this guy here, um, and I'm going to set that against that. I'll clamp this down, and then I'll clamp this to that, and that should stabilize this. Um, this is an interesting piece here. Uh, this is called a toolmaker's knee here. Um, it doesn't have any slots or anything in it, um, but uh, you can you can do some stuff with this. You can lay it down this way. Um, you can uh, you can lay it down like this. So and you can lay it on its side. So it's kind of a nice thing. Uh, and this is a good size for a Bridgeport size machine here. So uh, um, anyway, uh, this one is, uh, it's, I believe it's a Taft Pierce. Um, I think it's a Taft Pierce. Um, I don't know where the heck they put their name on this thing. Maybe not, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's called the Toolmaker's Knee, so it's kind of nice. So. I'm going to go that way. I'm going to put a... I hope this will make it. Yeah, it looks like it. It just needs a little bit of damping here uh, to kind of calm it down a little bit. All right. So I'm going to wait till I pin it down. Um, also, I may put a little shim in there just so it doesn't pull it out of alignment. Um, and do it that way. So I'm gonna get a couple of strap clamps and uh, nail this guy down. I think I'm just going to use one here. Uh, it doesn't need a lot. So now I got to deal with that little space. So this is uh, about 15 thousandths thick. Um, it's what, 400 microns, 380 microns, something like that. And it's just barely starting. Um, so I use that sometimes as a kind of a feeler gauge uh, on stuff like that. Um, eh, it's not gonna quite go. I gotta find something a little thinner. Oh yeah, that's 10, 10 thousandths. Uh, 10,000 brass, um, 250 microns. 
Oh yeah, that's gonna work good. So I found the spot where it was tight. I released this just a little and got it down in there a little farther. Now I'm gonna cinch down in that some. And that's in there. Okay, so that's probably all this thing's gonna need to, uh, to calm it down. Let's do a little test cut and see what we get. much better. This slot ends up a uh, half inch wide, and um, this cutter here is a regrind, so it's uh, it's uh, a little bit undersized. So I'll work it sideways and take out that last bit when I get all the way through. So let's see how central we are. Off a little bit. So we move over four about. Okay. Um, it's okay. All right, A little trial fit here. Well, it's starting to look like something now, instead of a bunch of steel in a pile. So what's left is uh, there's uh, originally I was just going to put bushings here and just lift the top on and off, but then I got kind of I got into it a little bit and I said, "Geez, I'll just make a hinge." So uh, there's a bronze part that goes on the back back here and uh, makes a hinge so that this thing, uh, uh, when you release the front here, you can, you can hinge that puppy up like that and let it swing back and not have to try to control it. Um, and then um, we'll be making um, a knob here instead of a nut just because it looks cooler and it's funner than a plain old nut like that. Um, and then uh, we'll figure out what kind of finish I want to do with the thing. Um, probably uh, just some simple painting uh, would be my guess after a little grinding work to, to clean it up. Um, but we're getting pretty close now. Uh, down to the wire there's probably, uh, I don't know, one or two episodes left. Uh, probably two episodes uh, uh, until this thing's done. So uh, and then we can move on to the next thing. So.